Well, I think the main limit that citizenship education has in times of conflict is in a way the dehumanization of both sides. So in a conflict by default, you dehumanize or you alienate the other side. When citizenship, on the contrary, tries to bring people together. So when you try to bring two sides that deeply hate each other in a way or are aggressive towards each other, then the challenge becomes how do you ha have them in one room to have one conversation? And if you cannot do that, in a way it becomes very hard to practice citizenship education. Well, I think networking is the primary role in trying to help citizenship education in times of conflict. Um, networking allows for an exchange of not only experiences and best practices and knowledge, but also supports the resilience of civic education actors by allowing a safe space, an environment in which, like NISI for example, in which actors in that field can talk, share experiences, understand from a human perspective. Because what we often maybe forget is that civic educators are themselves citizens and are themselves struggling with the big questions that any Lambda citizen can be struggling with. So I'd, I'd put networking first as a human to human because transnational help unfortunately always gets caught in politics in many ways.